Hello, Dr. Dewberry. Hello uh, to the rest of the class. Um, so we're going to be talking about communication obstacles um, in, in the job industry and so forth. Uh, I chose a industry that is uh, pretty similar, I would say, to uh, what I work in now at college, which is at a radio station, um, 107 in the Bronx. Um, I do a lot of that stuff, the similar stuff that this job I was looking at um, on LinkedIn, which I have uh, attached to the paper. Uh, it is a radio producer for a for a radio station um, in New York City out of iHeartMedia. Um, this is a job I was looking at in the area. Uh, New York's pretty big radio market, so it was. Uh, I think it was a great, you know, it could be a great potential opportunity maybe for me in the future. Uh, it's certainly something that I maybe would want to do uh, at some point. Not necessarily location, um, the best one, but you know, it's it's a it's not it's a pretty good um, opportunity. It looks like um, that's. That was uh, good for me, and it's good for any radio guy, right? That wants to be a producer. So there, there's that. And um, but there's obstacles to the industry, and I want to talk about that too. And that's what the challenge was for this. So I wanted to identify a couple issues with the radio industry that are particularly well known now. Um, you know, some of it's a little bit false, but uh, mostly true about it. So a job in the radio industry is really difficult um, to make a living off of. You need to be uh, really highly rated. Um, you need to have, you need to be very popular in order to have, you know, in order to get paid really well. Um, otherwise, you know, the radio industry is not, um, the greatest pay, you know, think of it as it's a full-time job with a part-time pay, um, is how I like to describe it. Generally on average, it's about 30 to 45,000, 40, 45,000 a year, um, for your average radio host or even producer job. Um, that could, that's definitely uh, the range there. So obviously with this kind of job, you might need another separate job, like part-time or something like that, to um, have a decent income, you know, yearly annual income and so forth. So that's a challenge. The other challenge, and I think this is bigger actually than personal financial um, issues, is the fact that the industry itself um, the ratings are fluctuating, but in the wrong direction, they're going down and it's on a decline. And I think that's, this is not just for the U S this is for worldwide. Um, so that's, that's a real important thing to note too. This is, um, U S uh, radio hosts see a decline. Um, I talk about that as far as NPR's, uh, ratings decline during the pandemic. I thought that was really important to note because NPR is one of the largest, uh, radio, um, businesses in the country. They have many different markets all around the nation. And in Australia, there's uh, a couple top hosts that have seen their ratings decline for a number of reasons, whether it's their content or, or other things with the pandemic and things like that, just like, you know, NPR. Um, there's wide varieties of reasons, but the real uh, important thing to note is that ratings are going down. And that's, that's the part that stands out. Now, ratings can go down for, um, can ratings going down can be a big consequence. Um, this means sponsors may not want to advertise. You know, radio stations rely on sponsors, um, just like this radio station at the Bronx does. And you know, if you don't have sponsors, you can't generate income. And then, unfortunately, the radio station loses money in that case. So that it kind of trickles down in that sense, and that's really the consequence you pay. Um, so, with that being said. Um, you know, there are solutions to this, I want, I want to say. There are solutions to, I, I think there are, and it's using general basic communication theories um, that I have studied extensively um, for the past, you know, three and a half years or so. Um, so that's, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to, to get down here. But um, yeah, so we talk about communication. We talk about niche audience. And we, and we like to talk about um, the fact that an audience has to be small sector, which I provide Rush Limbaugh as a great example here because I think, um, and I'm not talking about politically, I'm talking about as a host and the relationship he had with um, his listeners. And it was really dynamic. And there, there were a lot of, um, you know, it was more like a uh, circle pattern uh, of communication he had with his listeners. Listeners could call in, they could, they could talk to him. He was very receptive. He had conversations. It was conversational. And I think a lot of radio hosts today are less conversational um, and more just talking. They're, they're talking at you, not to you. And I think that's part of why, why these things happen, especially now when we see a lot more radio shows now with multi-hosts and things like that, less solo shows. There are certainly some out there, but a lot of multi-host uh, shows now. 
So now you see, now it can be con conveyed as, you know, a conversation between them and not talking, not them talking to you. Um, and that kind of diminishes the relationship between the host and the uh, listeners or the receivers um, in communication is how we define it. Um, so that's definitely factoring in. And I think that's part of the, the big problem. Also problem solving um, things. So we talked about Aristotle before in, in, in uh, my three and a half years and how he developed this sort of uh, virtuous uh, personality. And, and uh, I think that that's missing a lot of the times in radio. Rush Limbaugh provided that, whether you disagreed with him or not. Um, he always provided solutions or, or alternative ideas to, um, his, to the problems that he felt were consequential to the world. Um, so, you know, whether you agreed or disagreed with him, that was, uh, I think, a big part of why he stood out and why he was so convincing is because he had solutions and the audience was ready uh, to hear what he had to say every single day. And, and I think that bodes well for the audience too. They, they see him as a more credible, trustworthy person, all things we talked about with Aristotle um, at one point. Uh, in the past. So I think tying that back is, is really important too. And, you know, just to round things up, I, I think that's, that's, that's everything. And, and I think decline, the ratings are declining in radio. You know, there are different mediums and of course, you know, communication and digital media very much evolving um, right in front of us. We see that every day. Uh, but I, I think certainly there, there are great, great examples of radio, high quality radio in terms of uh, its delivery and the relationship with with the receivers and the messages being delivered, um, the the pattern of communication. Uh, I think these are things that can still be improved in radio. We've seen that before in modern day radio hosts. Uh, Rush Limbaugh is just one example. You can name several of the top guys in the United States. Um, be, uh, plenty to to go from. So, um, but yeah, so radio can be definitely improved on in terms of ratings. But this is everything to the industry. And radio, being a radio producer is, is very different from a host, yes. Um, but if you don't have a radio show, then there is no team, there is no host, there is no producer, there's no engineer, there's nothing, right? So, um, you know, while it is a radio producer job for a morning show, um, it is also important to note that the industry needs, um, you know, the money coming in, it needs sponsorships, it needs ratings. Um, so I think that's the biggest issue facing um, the industry ultimately. So that's all I have to say. And I will see you guys later.